Welcome to a driving review of the Mercedes E-Class facelift. Today, E-Class convertible E450. Let's go. Here in the front, the Mercedes E-Class facelift for all versions has a more modern front grille, wider, flatter, more sporty. Also in this A form, so the top part is shorter, the lower part is wider. This they mean by A form. This is the AMG line, so we have the diamond pin front grille, my favorite Mercedes grille. So it really looks quite fancy, contrasting lower part, a very strong red color definitely, so also fits to the convertible. LED is now standard for the main headlamp unit for all E-Class versions and the LED multi-beam, so the more extensive one with high beam function, that is then an option. And what's also cool is then when you hold the key fob here with the opening button, you can see you can actually yeah, ro remotely almost, you have to stay close to the car for that, for safety reasons. You can open that convertible top, that's really fancy of course, and works up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. And you see that the design is also being kept when the car is open right here. So that's the thing here about beautiful cars. You can also lower the windows, for example, with the key. Here, just one straight design line. This is the reason why it very works. You know, works very well also with the open top. In the rear, the E-Class facelift brings new tail lamps for the Cove and the convertible. The change is not that big, it was bigger with the sedan, but here also updated, more modern light signature here, a little bit more segmented, but very beautiful and interesting. E450, six cylinder for today, and also a very seamless design here overall. In the lower part, <whistles> out of fake exhaust police, Outer tip, beauty, real exhaustion on the inside. Today, the E450 3 liter inline six cylinder with mild hybrid technology, EQ boost, so some recuperation is possible and also some electric boost. And so the acceleration figure is about five seconds. And horsepower wise, between 360 and 370 horsepower depending on the market. There's also the E53 AMG available, 435 horsepower, 4.4 seconds is the acceleration figure right there. And uh, V8 is not available for the convertible or the coupe. And in Europe, we also get the two liter four cylinders, both petrol and diesel. And also a lot of them have been upgraded now with mild hybrid technology, especially the petrol ones. Two new steering wheels with the E-Class now with the facelift. This one here being the AMG one has a two fin design, a space in between. The other one is kind of closed. This one looks fancier, also has a thicker grip right here. So for, as for that, going for the AMG line or for the E53 does make sense to get this steering wheel. And by the way, in the sporty setup, you can also get this steering wheel with a complete microfiber wrap. Um, there's one version with microfiber at the outside, but the best one would be complete microfiber wrap, the Dynamica, so-called at Mercedes, is really cool, better grip and also warmer in, um, in winter times and cooler in summer times, so that really pays off. Now, news, MBOX infotainment for all the E-Class standard, but standard would be 10.25 inch, so with bigger bezels and smaller screens. This here is the optional 2x12.3 inch, so Again, standard 10.25 inch, 
and optional this 12.3 inch two times left and right new with the face lift but in both cases you get the voice input here the seats animal skin wrap optional in this case in Europe we start with a very good setup where this middle part this one exactly following this line would be in fabric that stays cooler in summertime and warmer in winter times and also the inside here and Artico leatherette or ambitex called at the outside that would be the best choice and in the AMG line or in the E53 you can also get the middle part with Dynamica microfiber as standard that is also available in the US so if you want to go for a better comfort and climate comfort for the seat and also animal free have to go for the E53 in the US in Europe and Germany you can also go for the base fabric version beautiful is definitely the beige interior and good that the top part was kept in black so there's no reflections then in the windscreen getting inside it's of course not a small convertible but the cool thing about an E-Class convertible yeah shoe tab is mandatory so you have a lot of comfort when seating here it's like in a you know, e-class sedan or something so that's pretty cool headroom plenty of headroom yeah of course <laughs> the roof is uh, um, open at the moment but really you have a very comfortable seating position adjustment then from the inside of the doors so it gives you this sophisticated e-class experience now the interior overview where you can again see this dual screen setup and there's this you know overlapping it's actually quite cool because it protects against sunlight and so on. Then here, ambient lighting is integrated right there. That's actually pretty cool. Also inside the air vents, round air vent style. Here again, the matte wood, matte wood styling. Also here, there are different stylings now available since the facelift for the middle console that there's also an alternative to just piano lacquer. That's actually quite cool. Once again, the new AMG steam wheel here with the, you know, split left side you actually control the left instruments and also the cruise control and on the right side you can control the right screen now the digital instruments they are very flexible in the usage so you can have different information in the middle part for example like some you know um, GPS input or the map for example here. Head-up display is always a nice option with the speed and also some traffic sign recognition would be put, put in there and also some GPS information. And there we go with the main screen now including the MBUX also with the voice input and you can also search for car functions. For example, hey Mercedes. How can I help? Activate steering wheel heating. I'm sorry. This vehicle does not have steering wheel heating. So in this case, I know it doesn't have the, it is an option, 350 euros, by the way, steering wheel heating. But in this case, I could activate it when it would be possible. But here the car then is telling me it's not available in this car. It was not built in that. Yeah, interesting. Here, the screen has a good visualization, I think. So also when I take a look at the GPS, Map looks quite fancy, all with the small clouds here, beautifully done. And um, there's also an Apple CarPlay um, hotkey here, um, so with a good sound system here. Wow, the Burmester sound system is really, really nice. Headroom-wise, it works when I don't put my spine all the way up, then it works, and then left it closed down that you can see. You know, headroom is somewhat limited, but of course it's also soft, so when I put my spine up, I don't, you know, hurt my head and it is a little bit cramped in here. You have a separate climate unit here and when you put the seat here back, then it directly works like this when there's also a tall driver. So, um, I mean, yeah, I can squeeze myself in here. So it is possible to drive with four adults more or less definitely. And this is also a reason when you would go for the air cap system. So there's this air cap system. Um, that is a wind deflector that is also making it possible to switch, you know, with people in the back, back and forth. So in the front, there's like a small area lifting up, very interesting. At the same time, there's a small wind deflector lifting up in the rear, about 800 euros extra. But there's still a classic wind deflector um, possible. Here we go now, it is installed, the classic wind deflector like this. So. It blocks then the rear seats, but if you don't use them, usually for passengers, it doesn't matter that much. And you can also put this one here easily back down again for some, you know, 
better view to the rear if you're driving then with closed top once again and when you open the top then just put it up manually right here and you can at all times also remove it completely in here again and there it's also secured it's not too hard to deinstall it again and this one here the the height when it's open this here 26 centimeters and the top one would be less than 40 centimeters so that's then the difference and then here we go we can push a button in the top part of the trunk and then this one becomes available when the roof is actually closed and then we can also left and right fold the seats then i can go around here and fold the seats like this and then you can also load things through Hey, what's up? It's DJ Thomas in the house. In this case, not this jockey, but driving jockey. And DJ Thomas bringing you Thomas's driving lounge with the Mercedes E-Class convertible. And you know, at the time of the recording of this video, it's quite cold outside, but that doesn't mean that you cannot drive with open top. That's why we're going to start with that. And the cool thing about soft tops is you can drive up to 50 kilometers an hour here. So, you know, like, 25 miles easily and can open that thing and that is so cool that is so helpful so if i remember like old soft top convertibles or high, especially on the hard top convertibles where you cannot do that this is so helpful that you are actually able to do just that this is really cool and i mean you've seen it here the change on the image ah, it's so great the sun is coming out just a little bit now and that's also the thing about the Mercedes E-Class convertible. It is an all-season convertible, not only for uh, Los Angeles residents. So even, you know, there are basically three typical convertible markets in the world. California, UK and Germany. <laughs> that's just it. And you can actually drive it also all season long in Germany. Main thing is definitely about the wind deflector. So I told you earlier, for like 400 bucks, you can get the classic wind deflector in the rear. I would always recommend that, unless you are frequently using then the rear bench for three or four people driving, and then you have that air cap system here, and you know that thing in the back, driving up, and also this small spoiler there in the top, and it is not as effective as the classic wind deflector in the rear. However, it does bring down at higher speed low frequency noises. Where we like where wind noise would go like pop 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 pop. It would more like you know, so it makes the low frequency wind noise more high frequency. So better bearable and also reducing the wind turbulence inside the cabin. However, now for winter times, not wearing it at the moment for camera purposes, but I can always recommend wearing a beanie just inside the convertible even when you have the air cap system you know there's also the air scarf system i can also activate it at the inside of the doors when you have that option and the thing is to me i mean i, I know a lot of people who love that system but to me either it's really warm in the convertible and don't need it or it's really cold and then you're wearing you know like a thick jacket a coat and something and then it's not really reaching your neck so that's the reason to me it's not the most important option it might be for something you know let's say it's like spring or autumn and you have just you know not that very thick clothes and then you think oh miscalculated a little bit it's a little bit colder than i thought and then activate the neck heater that could be something and this is so amazing here some winter sun oh, it's so beautiful that's why I love driving convertibles and I mean when you look at the camera images you know when I'm sitting here you see a lot of light and air around me and you see more of the background and so on you see light from the top this is so beautiful just with the camera image that you think I want to be in that place at the moment and driving that convertible and that's what I love about convertibles and also one of the other main thing about this vehicle is it's an e-class yes it's an e-class i mean that sounds really obvious but it's also one of the main characteristics of this vehicle it's the e-class convertible 
and that also distinguishes it to the C-Class convertible, meaning what? You're driving a convertible, yes, but you really feel that you would be driving an e like an E-Class sedan. The driving feeling, E-Class sedan and the E-convertible and the E-coupe is not that different. You really feel the distinguished feeling, this is the Mercedes E-Class. Especially then here with the adaptive air suspension. I mean, we know that the base suspension, which already includes adaptive elements, is already doing great. And you can still drive it comfortably with the base suspension with the E-Class and 20-inch wheels, the most uncomfortable setup, but will still be comfortable. This year, what we're driving at this moment, is the most comfortable setup for an E-Class in general. 18-inch wheels, yes, okay, for the sedan there's also 7. I mean, in the US it's, you know, 18-inch for the convertible standard, but you can also go 17-inch in Germany, I think, and of course with the sedan. But we have 18-inch wheels here and the air suspension, the optional one, adaptive air suspension, more than 2,000 euros extra. And this is just heaven of a ride, you know, really soft carpet driving feeling. At the same time, it's not too soft, so you don't feel like you're wobbling around all the time. And you also have the dynamic select here, meaning that you can go to the sports mode and then make it stiffer. Also, response from the engine is a little bit sportier then, and so on and so on. So you can really pick that. Great here also with the face step, the new steering wheel. As for the steering characteristics, it's to me more fine-tuned. You know, Mercedes steering wheel, steering ratios are not in a way that they are too progressive. They are more for running straight in a more relaxed and calm manner. At the same time, it feels very natural. There's no dead zone area. You just have to steer a little bit more than you would steer with BMW, Audi and VWs and so on. But when, since the face lift, you know, you have a, somewhat like a better grip with the steering, especially the AMG steering wheel, my favorite one. It looks sporty here, cooler here with the horizontal fins and, you know, the whole grip handle you have on that, that's somehow cooler. Um, but at the same time, told you earlier, the step backwards, definitely these capacitive buttons at the steering wheel, just so annoying when you want to control something and you over control something and you go back again because they are really, really sensitive. So that was better before. So not always we have just steps ahead, we have also steps back. You also have this EQ Boost and also possible EQ Charge. What does it mean? It's the MHEV system, mild hybrid technology. So when I'm going downhill here now, I think you can also see that here in this part, this green, um, green charging level, that means there's recuperation happening, not compared to a battery in a true hybrid or in a plug-in hybrid or electric vehicle. Just some recuperation is happening in there actually. But this is then better for efficiency in general. And you can also use it then again as an EQ boost, means as an electric boost of the acceleration. Here, once again, so cool. I'm going to the motorway and I can close the top, no problem. However, I really have to say, I tested quite a lot of times now, even here with this convertible, you can also drive in a, you know, in a fast way with the open top. So driving one kilometers or 60 miles now on the motorway with open top is possible. Then again, this air cap system, the difference is that you change a little bit of the frequency of the wind noise with that. But once again, especially when you're driving higher speed motorway, go for the classic old school wind deflector. It will do even better, especially at higher speeds. No doubt about that. And then you close the top and you think, wait a minute, am I driving a Mercedes E-Class Coupe or something a Coupe? Because this acoustic top there, remember, available in different colors, black, red, blue, brown, it's so well insulated that you lose the feeling of, oh, I'm driving a convertible and it's loud when it's open top, but it's also loud when it's closed up. No, even driving higher speeds, you know, there's hardly any difference in anymore, only if you really drive super fast, like 160 kilometers an hour, like you know, 100 miles per hour, then you would still feel difference, E-Class Coupe sedan to the convertible, where the real close top cars 
a better ass for the noise installation from 16. Well, that's 180 kilometers an hour. Should be enough for now. Good performance and also nice sound, I think, here in the sports mode. Also better from the sound. And there you have it, 160 kilometers an hour. And I mean, yeah, from the left side there, from the non-existing B pillar, I hear some wind noise. But I mean, we're driving a convertible at 160 kilometers an hour. That's so silent. It's more silent than a lot of other cars that have closed tops. So great performance as for the wind noise. And now to our conclusion for the day with the Mercedes E-Class convertible. Beautiful sunlight we have here right now. And also a beautiful red color. No doubt about that. So the facelift has brought a more sporty design even in the base versions. More so than here in the AMG line. Or if you go for the true AMG model E53. Will be linked in the video description. That review definitely. And also interior upgrades. Definitely good with the new MBOX where you can also have voice input both for the smaller and the bigger screen. The steering wheel better to handle, sportier handling, looks also fancier, but in both versions, the normal and the AMG version, the capacitive input, the user input or user interface is worse than before. So that's the only catch with this vehicle. Other than that, a beautiful riding experience, sovereign driving, lot of comfort, especially with the air suspension, the optional air suspension, is definitely a great choice. One of the most, if not the most comfortable and the most silent convertible on the market and all season convertible. Obviously, you see that right here. So, really good ratings. Fuel economy could be a little bit better. The new mild hybrid system is doing maybe a little bit for that, but not too much, not a real game changer as for that. And also more animal skin alternatives for here for the E450 on the US market. That is missing, for example. So on the US, I would go for the E53. And yeah, meanwhile, really good friends with the E53. But here in Germany, this one here, of course, could be a more comfortable choice. And then if you go for the fabric seats here as well, they will bring even more comfort than for this convertible and climate comfort, both for summer and winter times. But overall, I think we can all agree on that. This is one of the dream convertibles on the market. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Tune into the other E53 episode and also other interesting videos we have linked in the video description. See you there.